Good afternoon, Leash Jump and Hump John. This is many a true dirt and welcome to Dungeons and Degenerate Gamblers. A game that feels somehow inevitable to me because uh, the moment Balatro came along and said, hey, let's take the basic rules of poker, then turn them into a roguelike where you can add increasingly ludicrous cards into your deck in order to cheat, well, uh, at that point it was only a matter of time until someone else came along and said, hey, what if we take the basic rules of blackjack and turn that into a roguelike where you could add increasingly ludicrous cards into your deck in order to cheat? And here we flipping are. Okay, let's just jump on in because yes, for the time being, this is all pretty easy to get your head around. It's going to get ludicrous later, but for now, all pretty simple. All I'm doing is playing blackjack, which if you're unfamiliar with it, is basically a case of drawing cards to get as close to 21 as possible without going over it. Go over 21, you lose. So I shall just press the hit button to draw a card. Mega flippinificent. I draw a face card, that's worth 10. So okay, meanwhile, yes, he's drawn an ace, that could be worth a 1 or 11. So okay, keep on hitting and... Right. I have drawn another face card, meaning I'm now at 20 out of 21. A really bloody good score. Meanwhile, he's been less lucky and drawn a 7, putting him at 18. So, uh, yeah, he's behind me. And because he's playing the role of uh, the dealer in a game of blackjack, he has to abide by certain rules. In particular, he has to stand on 17, meaning basically, uh, I've won on this occasion. And yes, this is where um, the slightly weird scoring system uh, comes into play, which is, as it says on the table at the top there, Damage is equal to the score difference, so uh, because I've played 20 and he's played 18, the difference is 2. So when I stand in just a moment, there we go. The difference of 2 is deducted from his health bar. This being a tutorial fight, yes, I've got 100 health, he only starts off with 5. We're just introducing the basics here, that's all absolutely A-OK, -okay. so... Uh, Right, begin playing again, 2 uh, versus 5, uh, up to 5, uh, 13, uh, 13 is... Uh, that's a dangerous place to be, because uh, do bear in mind, uh, yeah, the most common thing you can draw is absolutely a 10, because face cards are worth 10, 10's going to show up way more often, so uh, there's a good chance he might be about to bust himself, so uh, there we flip it go. Not a 10 and 9 on this occasion, but it doesn't flipping matter. He's gone bust anyway, and uh, in this game, yeah, you want to be really, really bloody careful, you don't go cocking bust. Because as it says at the top there, bust equals zero. Meaning, if I go bust and he goes up to, you know, say something really modest like a 15, that's still 15 points of damage. Like, do not go bust in this game, you will cocky die. I really don't need to, like, you know, keep playing, I just feel like humiliating him at this point. So, uh, okay, now I'm up to 14, we can stand there, meaning uh, 14 points of damage, and you, sir, have uh, been defeated. So, uh, that's the basics, but, um, yeah. At this point, things start getting a bit silly. Because now I get to add cards to my deck, and when I say cards, uh, pretty much, um, anything is allowed to be added into the decks, by the way. For example, here's the half of clubs, which when it's drawn is worth a zero, but when I stand, will round up, i.e. increase its value by one, if and only if, that wouldn't cause me to go bust. So, if this is part of my plate hand, yeah, 20 would become 21, but 21 wouldn't become 22, so, okay, as I say, this game's going to get silly in a hurry. Alternatively, the Kanban card. On play, move one of the bottom of three cards from your draw pile into your hand. So, uh, at that point, I just get to, like, hold on to it and use it whenever I want. So, uh, I mean, I tell you what. That seems pretty good, actually. So, yes, I'll take that. That's now in my deck and... Uh, Okay, the deck's going to get sillier and sillier as time goes by. And one final thing we need to check, and now we've just beaten the introductory bartender fight, which is it's setting the rules of this run, which is uh, powerful, weird, stupid cards that break all the rules. Uh, to use them, you've got to spend advantage. The way you gain advantage varies run to run, depending on which chip you pick right at the start. So, the big blind chip means anytime I play anything with a value of a 10 or higher, I gain an advantage, a pretty good, or I can spend 10 chips to gain an advantage, which I'd rather not do because, you know, uh, chips are going to be spent in various ways over the course of the run. 
you know what? There's so many cards worth 10 in my deck, because every face card is, so uh, we'll take the big blind. Marvellous. And uh, with that, now we need to, you know, uh, proceed in our flipping way. Picking our opponents, or alternatively, diverting into alternative events if they happen to show up. So, on this occasion, we'll take on a lovely, lovely gambler. So, he's going to be standing on 17, he's got 50 chips, but yeah, he's got a fair whack more health. So, uh, okay, draw a queen, immediately that gets me an advantage, magnificent. Starting off with 10, that's a good place to be, So ideally... You want to see another 10. He's going to stand on 17. I'll stand there. Magnificent. So, uh, you know, uh, that's a good way of doing chip damage. What we really want, though, uh, is finding a way to either, you know... Oh, blimey. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. He's got wacky stuff in his deck. So he just pulled the scratch card out, giving him a, yeah, a value of uh, 15. And also just giving him a, a big old pile of chips. Which is really good for me, to be honest, because that's just the amount of money I get to steal off him when I kick his ass. And yeah, if you want to, you can just, um, you know, uh, look in his deck and see what's coming up. So, right, he's got more of the same, in fact. Oh, blimey. He's also got um, an 11 and a 12, which is, you know, completely allowed because nothing makes sense in this game. So, uh, right. He's going to draw again, and there's only a 33% chance he's going to, like, you know, uh, survive. Like, 33% chance he'll hit 21, but 66, he's about to go bust. So in which case, just to draw up to 17, and there we go. He goes bust, meaning I can now do a ridiculous amount of damage. And, uh, okay, one more thing too. You may notice that, yes, the game is keeping track of what suit is making up your hand right now. The reason being, if you hit 21, you get a bonus effect. So in the case of the hearts, which is what my starting deck's made out of, it's healing. So if you take a tiny bit of damage, hitting 21 will give you some health back. Brilliant. Still, I'm going to stand here, obviously, and yeah, that's a ridiculous dumb amount of damage right there. He's almost cocky dead. So, oh, hang on, I see. Right, it's a value and the amount of chips it generates is the same. So, it's literally worth a random amount of money. Fascinating. Though, bad luck for him because, yes, the 11's already in his discard pile, given I can always spy on his deck and also what's left in mine if that's what I want to do. So... Okay, once again, that 12 would bankrupt him immediately and 16 would not be a good result for him. Just keep on hitting, that's... Okay, sir, I'm really sorry, but you have not gambled well. And bloody hell. Right, so uh, there's the Queen of Chess, which if I exploit, I, you know, are spending an advantage. Uh, that moves to my foe's side uh, and then locks, meaning he can't get rid of it. So... Uh, Okay, basically, yeah, I'd be forcing an extra 10 onto my opponent's side, which I could use to basically, you know, uh, bust him, which is sort of interesting, actually. Alternatively, a reverse card, not worth anything. When I play it, yes, all of a sudden he has to play before me, which means, you know, I'll be able to see what's going on a bit better. Or the fingerprint card, uh, worth 10, not bad, that's a good amount, to be honest. On play and stand... Uh, exploit a random one of your played cards uh, that has an exploit doesn't cost an advantage. So uh, I'm going to take the Queen of Chess that's also a spade uh, and yes, use that to kick my way over to my opponent. So, uh, okay, at this point I could either take on a drunk or I could go and have a drink. I'm going to have a drink because yes, I can uh, remove a card by drinking a beer but take some damage. Uh, Alternatively, pay your 40 chips and up to 138. That's the main currency up in the top left there. That adds a loyalty card to my deck and also lets me remove a card. Or finally, a 65 chips to add a loyalty card with three stamps already on it. Remove a card and take six damage. So uh, I'm going to pay for the house special. So I get myself a loyalty card right there. And yeah. Every time I play that, or exploit it, it gains a stamp permanently. 10 stamp is a free blackjack. And on top of that, I now get to get rid of a card. So, okay. Like, there's probably a really good tactical choice here, but I've not figured out this game well enough. So, I'm gonna say, get rid of, yeah. Let's say the 9. I just don't like the look of that 9 there. Let's go for either 10s or really small numbers. So, Okay, the counterfeiter, who can, like, you know, uh, fiddle with cards to change them for me, 
or instead that drunk's come back again. Okay, if the drunk is determined to kick my ass, I will gladly take him on because, uh, yeah, the drunk is weird. He stands on at uh, 13, so he stands uh, very, very low. He's not generally too difficult to take care of, so, uh, okay. There's 13. This isn't really what I wanted to see because, yeah, he's now going to play again. We're both in a slightly dangerous position right now. But all right, I'll take a hit. 17, a 15, a right. We'll stand there because, yeah, he will stand on the 13. So, okay, a light little tap, nothing too major. Now we're up to, ooh, 12 versus 18. I could just take my lumps and accept the 6, but... Okay. The problem we've got here is, uh, yeah, I do have a lot of 10s left in my deck. Then again, I do also have, like, you know, uh, these three and a whole bunch of stuff that's worth uh, nothing, aside from the Queen of Chess, which I could send over to him. So, uh, screw it. I'm going to take the gamble. And I got really cocking lucky there, but was that really worth the risk? Probably not. Okay. Two more damage, but yeah, that's such a small hit to him. I probably should have just, you know, uh, surrendered and not taken the risk. So he's on 13. Hang on, what else have you got, buddy? You've got the rule card. You can choose to set either max score to 20 or 22 this encounter. So, uh, right, he can change the entire rules of the game for either me or him for the rest of this entire encounter. Lovely. So, hit again, a beautiful, and on this occasion, yes, I could exploit this to send it over to him. And if I do that, he's going to bust, right? So send that over to you. Yes, you're now on flipping 23, meaning I can hit again safely. That gets me 21, which also happens to, you know, be worth a giant pile of healing, so... That's worked out really nicely. Because, yeah, because he's bust, I'm going to do a giant pile of extra damage because he's now got zero, not like 13. So, yeah, that was definitely worth doing. And I like this cocky card. So, uh, right, stand there. I heal. You instantly die. And, uh, okay, so, yeah, there's the beginning of the nonsense. So, we've now got the Killer Queen of Spades on play. Burn any other play card. Then also increase the value over this card so okay so she like clears the field uh, and then becomes like 12 which could potentially be dangerous actually then there's the misprinted card so uh, sets value to six then adds a seven of spades to my hand and once something's in my hand yeah i can play it with advantage when i want to uh, and it also can be worth a seven if that wouldn't bust me, so uh, bloody hell, this is going to get complicated in a hurry. And the pie of diamonds, uh, okay. So yeah, that's at three, but can be worth at four. Alternatively, I can pay chips to reveal extra cards. So uh, the key card, choose one of my foes play cards and lock it. If it's already locked, unlock it. So right, basically, yes, force it to be stuck in play, yeah. I'm not sure that's that good, so right, I'm going to take the misprinted card uh, into my deck, right there, magnificent, so uh, either counterfeiter or the bard. We'll go to the bard on this occasion. Right, there is a beautiful ace, uh, lovely, you're on an eight meanwhile, and uh, there we go. I've got 21, I'm uh, happy to uh, stand there, magnificent, especially as, uh, yeah. If I send over my Queen of Chess, that won't actually bankrupt him. On the contrary, it'll put him on 21. So make him be there. And, uh, okay, we tied dear o flipping dear. That's all absolutely fine. So, uh, right, I've now got a 6 that can also be a 7. And I've got a 7 that I can choose to play if I want to. So cards in hand are really bloody useful. So, okay. That's now an 8. He's on 7. Hang on, your joker is... Uh, Copy the value and suit to one of your discarded cards. Uh, fascinating. What else do you have, my friend? Right. Gerald from Riviera. Magnificent. So, uh, oh, you just get to start burning my cards. Dear, oh, flippin' dear. Right. Keep hitting. Now I get to, uh, yes, hang on. Choose a card to move into uh, my hand. Uh, so, okay, now I've got, yeah, a flipping 10 and 7 in my hand, so he won't stand just yet, but there's a good chance he might be about to bust himself. So just stay there. 18. No, a 17, but he's now going to stand. So okay. 
there's anything I should do. Honestly, no. On this occasion, just stand. This has been a good round for me anyway, because I get to keep these cards uh, in my hand uh, going forward. So, uh, okay. Eight. He then uh, burns my eight. So that's absolutely fine. Uh, four versus 13. Uh, 13's not a great spot. 17. Uh, he'll stand there. So, uh, right. What I'm going to do now is play my seven, because that's a guaranteed 21. Screw you. And on top of that, yes, because that card was um a spade, not a heart, when it got the 21, we picked up some shields instead of healing, which is good, because I'm already at full health. So, a five versus 10, 11 versus 14. Let's kind of hope before. John, why didn't you play the queen? You could have played the queen right there. That would have been way, way better. And uh, I'm going to stand and just take my lumps there. That's fine. I've got the shield. It's A-OK. -okay. But John, bloody hell, you had the cocky queen. So, OK. Could play the queen right now. I've got a seven and a loyalty card left in my hand. Always check what's in your hand. It's a very useful one. I'm going to play my queen and stand there. So, 14, 17, all right, three more damage, and no one's had, like, you know, a, a big catastrophic bust just yet. So, that's worth a zero, two, eight, seven versus 18, and he'll stand there. So, just a reshuffle, and then, yeah, that's going to be, that's a 13, but could be 14. So, if I play this and stand there, that will become 21, meaning I've now got a ridiculous dumb amount of shielding. But yeah, with this much shielding, I could be a bit more ballsy. So, uh, I'm going to play again. Gosh darn it. Took a bit of damage there, unfortunately. But that's fine. Shielding ain't most of that. Doesn't matter. So, okay. Four versus ten. Fourteen. You know what? Here. You're now bust to screw you. So, that leaves me free to just basically go up to... You know what? I'll take this. Then we'll take you. Stand there. <laughs> And you are now dead. Okay, I like the quid of chess. The quid of chess is magnificent. So I could take the 13 of hearts, the queen of wonderland, uh, half the value of any played card for this encounter. Then, yeah, he's giving me, uh, sorry, not Geralt from Riviera, Gerald from Riviera. The, you know, uh, royalty-free version. Or the library card, not worth anything on player lock. Then move a card from my foe's draw pile to your draw pile, Every time that card is discarded, uh, lose five chips. So I can literally steal cards from my opponents. Oh, that's hilarious. Yes, I'll be having that. Right, I've now got some money. So we're going to the counterfeit chappy. So uh, yeah, he can either increase or decrease a card uh, for a cost of uh, 45. So I'm going to take this 10 and turn it into an 11 because 11s are really, really cocking valuable. And then I'm going to take this 8 and turn it into a 7 because, yeah, a bit of clear air between, yeah, like the lower numbers and the higher numbers uh, is possibly good when it comes to probabilities. My brain's saying that might be useful down the line. So, right, the squire or the janitor. I'll take on the janitor. Sure, why not? So, uh, stands on 17, 30 damage, nothing too much going on here. So, uh, 12, then he's gone for the time card. Uh, exploit when you have a played card worth a 9 or 5 to gain chips. Doesn't affect me in any way. Lovely. Okay. The problem is, with a 12... There is a really good chance I'm going to draw, like, you know, a 10. I say that. It's like a third. I'm going to play again anyway. Never mind. I shouldn't have played anyway. So, okay. That's um, that's a big hit. That's why you don't play as carelessly as that. So, 11. Come on, 10. Beautiful. Stand right there. That's going to get me some of my health back right there. Good. Good, 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 good. So, okay. Six. He's just locked that in play, which honestly I'm fine with. I'm not sure what the disadvantage is there. So, uh... 17, and yeah, that 17 is also 18. I'm going to stand there for safety, and he beats me, but it's only one damage, because yes, the 17 was also an 18. So, okay, this is, oh, when you say lock, it's like locked permanently. Honestly, I'm okay with that, that's fine, so right, that's a 10, and that's not guaranteed with a 10 that also might be an 11, which is brilliant, actually, because that means that any 10 would be beautiful. So, okay, hang on. Now I can take his 10 and add that to my thing. He's at 9 right now. That's 17, but also can be 18. So if I stand now, 
that's going to be a tie, right? Yeah, that's just a tie. So that's fine. But now I've got 11 permanently, which is actually really good. Because, like, that means sooner or later, I'm going to draw a face card, right? That was a 2. That's unfortunate. You know what? Play that. Then stand there. That's a 21. Screw you. 2 damage. But yeah, we've not really, like, you know, majorly bust him just yet. 18. Stand on that, which is actually worth a 19. There we flippy go. He actually beats me on that, but that's fine. I'm swimming in shield for the time being. And uh, wait, what happened to my... Okay, something just happened to my 6 and or 7. But like, it's gone now, so that's interesting. What's left over here? Okay, 10 or queen of wood bust me. 4 wouldn't. I'm just going to take my lumps on this occasion because I've got the shielding. That's a-okay. So we're up to 7. And yeah, I will take probably a 10 right there. Just stand, see if maybe he busts. There we go, he busts. Just kind of, you know, playing very cautiously and waiting for your opponent to bust. That could be a really good strategy. So uh, what's left? Just you. So that means... Uh, okay, there was nothing to, like, you know, draw because I had nothing left in my draw pile. Dear, I flipping dear. So uh, 13. I will take a hit. And 19. Good. So stand there because that's also worth 20. He busts again. And there we go. You're now gone. So two fairly conventional cards. Also, yes, another loyalty card, which is not bad because, you know, eventually that's just a free cocking blackjack. But yeah, I will pay 21 to reveal the heart of threes. Fascinating. So yeah, it's worth a three. And if you've already got 18 or more... You heal. That feels underwhelming. I'll just take a second loyalty card. That's fine. And okay, we have now made it to the boss of Area 1. The manager. And being the first boss, yes, he's got a bit more of a fascinating deck going on. With a lot more dumb cards. So, uh, okay. With the business card, and he's got several of these. Uh, he can basically just say, hey, I'll be having that card of yours. Uh, alternatively, right. This card, yeah, moves to his hand, so he's just got a tanner he can play whenever he wants to. And on top of that, he can add a random ace to his sleeve. So, uh, right, he's basically cheating, and he's going to cheat a lot. Gotcha. So, uh, let's just, you know, uh, see how this goes. Uh, bearing in mind, yeah, if I have advantages, the fight goes on. I can use that to give myself a 21 via the loyalty card. So, uh, a 9, a 7. He steals my loyalty card. What a dick. So I'm on 18, or at least I was on 18. Then he just stole something else off me because he's just doing business cards. But that's fine. I've got an 11 right now. So yeah, good chance of a 10 if we're lucky. 14. He's gone bust. You stupid loser. All that faffing about. And yes, you don't even get to flipping and do anything. So uh, I could play again. But I feel like it's best just take 14 damage. 14 damage is a good hit. Don't, you know, bust after he's already bust. So, there's two where he now picks up a free ace, which is absolutely a-okay. Okay, loyalty card. Does he actually have my loyalty card, by the way? He does have my loyalty card. Anyway, he's on 19. He's going to have stood there because, yeah, he's past 17. So, uh, now it's just up to me. So, 8, standing. 18. The problem is, yeah, my chance of... No, I'm just going to stand. I will just take one damage there. That's fine. Play cautiously. Wait for your chance to murder him. So, 10 versus 10. 14 versus 17. He's going to stand there. Okay. 14 is actually not terrible. Okay, I'm going to take a hit. It's just... Literally the one card that I didn't need. Well, that's just cocking useless, isn't it? So, okay. Bit of a hit there, but that's fine. The odds were not in my favor on that occasion. There's 18. The problem is if I stand here, yeah, he could, you know, uh, draw business cards and start messing with me. Especially as... Ooh. Okay. If he draws the credit card, yeah, that will just go in his hand. Uh, then he plays that, meaning... Okay, he's basically guaranteed to steal uh, one of my cards. Which is a problem, because that's going to lower me to... Uh, oh, bloody hell. Right, well, you've got my number today. Because, right, he steals... Oh! Wait, he bust himself. How did he do that? I don't know, but it worked out for me. Don't try and understand this game. It's going to go, like, wrong at various points. So he plays his credit card. Uh, 
He's at 20. But I've got a not bad chance of 21. And there we flipping go. Which also gets me, yeah, some healing and some hearts. Good, 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 good. So right, now I've got some protection. I can play, you know, a, a little bit more nasty. And okay with his library card. Right, I'll be having the cocking loyalty card back, actually. Thank you very much. He's also on minus a three right now, because why wouldn't he be? There's that loyalty card. If I wanted to, I could spend several advantage just to, yeah, get that ready to go right now. I could basically force a 21. And you know what? I'm going to do that. So, okay, that's bare minimum a heal, and he's weaker once again. Bloody bad luck. For the second time in a row, I've drawn the Kanban card. When there's no cards to cocky, you know, select and put in my hand. Also, John, do not forget the seven. The seven might be useful. So, there's that. Send you over to you. And with that... Lovely. Put you in play for seven. Just continue hitting for the time being. There's an 18. Stand right. Wait, 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 wait. What did I... Oh, John. That was an ace. So I didn't bust him because its value changed from 11 down to... A... Oh, that's... Well, that's cocking embarrassing. Right. So, bare minimum. Just shielding. That's fine. So, okay. The 10. Wait, when did I get the business card? Hang on, what's going on here? Just keep hitting for 15. Now send that over to him. And now he's bust and he's stored. And now I can just stand straight away. Because yes, the 5 will kill him. This game gets complicated in a hurry. Dear oh flippin' dear. Also, there's like a plot. Because you're supposed to be figuring out who's in charge of this weird magical casino. So, okay, I can now have a yes. The half of hearts, which is worth either zero or one. The 12 of spades. Uh, the king of kings. Uh, Bernal currently played kings. Uh, and then take damage, but also gain chips for burning kings. Blimey. And the blank card, uh, which on first play sets its value between one and 11. I'm going to take the half of hearts, because that's useful. And on top of that, I can now go to a tarot reading, getting me a very powerful tarot card of some description. So, okay. We have got death worth 13 on play, and the fresh copies of every card of my draw pile to my draw pile. So, like, you know, refreshes my deck. Fascinating. The hermit worth 9. Burn all other currently played cards. Then I'm a force to stand. That seems bad, actually, but okay. And justice, on play, replace all your jacks with random kings. Why is that good? I'm going to take death, because why not? Right, so now we either go, uh, yes, up or down, the lounge or the basement. So, uh, I have no idea, like, you know, whether one is uh, good uh, or not. Let's go up. To, like, the membership lounge. So, you know, now we're just in a fancier casino. Though, uh, yes, we're also going to be taking on tougher and tougher opponents. And not just tougher, but also increasingly non-cocking sensical. So, uh, okay, let's just, you know, uh, run with it and see what happens. So, uh, seven, nine, you just hang on. Add a fresh copy of uh, my currently played cards into your draw pile. Okay, fine, I suppose. Uh, up to, uh, yes, the... 15, or possibly 16. Okay, now we're getting into dangerous territory. She's going to stand on 18. I'm going to take the risk. Gosh, flipping darn it. We both bust. Never mind. It was a tie. So, okay. That's absolutely fine. A bit, yeah. Given she's the luck pusher, standing on only 18, yeah, there's a good chance she's going to bust herself a fairly large amount. So, uh, that's either a 0 or a 1. So, 7 and... You know what? Things just happened. Don't even worry about it. So, now I'm at 20. And I can send that over to her if I want to. I think she just stole my, yes, half of hearts. I've also got the fool. So, uh, right, the fool just, like, swaps cards around. Uh, yeah. I could just take one damage. But if I send you over there, you've now been a bust. Put you to... Gosh, I was hoping for better than 15. It'll do. So, right. The Queen of Chess is basically incredible. So, keep on keeping on. That's also been locked for the time being. So, can I exploit that back to me in order to give myself... 
Okay, well, life is good. I'm just going to stand here, though. You might mess with my deck and... Never mind. The luck pusher is being absolutely cocking annihilated. So, okay, you can just move the Queen of Chess around as you wish, which I find delightful. So, library card uh, lets me, like, you know, uh, steal some stuff. Graveyard. Set a value at random between 6 and 10. And I can exploit it to be worth a less if I want to. Interesting. Yeah, you know what? Sure, I'll have that. So, 10 versus 10. Hit again. 13. Send the queen back over to you. You've now bust, meaning we're 14. Screw you. Okay, the... Oh. Did I just lose my queen? Because it was like on your side at the time. So, a card worth a zero that can be exploited to play three halves of a chosen suit. Then discard this card. So, uh, these halves are burn on discard. So, right, they can only be used uh, once. So, yeah, that's just a bunch of uh, zeros that can equal uh, ones. Alternatively, negative uh, three of hearts. The trump card, uh, instant blackjack, but it needs to be uh, shredded. So, okay, you literally only use it once. Or the non-fungible card, uh, worth a 12, but its value also fluctuates every time you hit to a random number between a 1 and 1 less than what the card is currently worth. So its value is going to always go down, just, you know, uh, unpredictably. So uh, that's so incredibly dumb. I'm going to take the Dark Flower. Okay, we're gathering a chips in a hurry. We've got a 10 versus a 6, 16, also 16. You can't stand, though. I'm going to stand here, and I'm going to hope you're going to bust yourself. And on this occasion, there we go. You stole some cards and whatnot, but that's true, actually. Bloody how good. Good, good, good. The Queen of Chess is still there. They didn't steal it. That was just, you know, a temporary. You don't lose cards if they get stolen. They get returned to you after the fights. So, okay, keep on keeping on. There's the loyalty card, a report card that, you know, just gives some shielding. And also, hang on, if you've got 11 shield, add the ace of spades to your hand, uh, 21, make it a foil, and you know what? I'm not even going to try and understand some of these cards. So, uh, right, I've now got a zero that can be a one, up to five, uh, 11, uh, with a seven in a hand. So that would be, uh, yeah, if I play that, that's an 18 that can be, that can be a 20, actually. Yes, that's a 20. So that's good right there. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now I can start stealing your cards if I want to. You know what? I'm going to steal your library card. So you can't steal more of my cards. So six. There's a loyalty just coming round and around. Sixteen. You're now going to hold it to yes. Seventeen. I'm going to play... Ooh. Dangerous. But I do have, you know, sevens. I'm going to take a hit. And right. With that, I can select this card. Uh, play that card, and there we go. That's 21. Though, unfortunately, when you're max healthy, yeah, having a heart deck doesn't really help you much. But we're still doing some damage here. She's on minus 11 as a starting point. Minus 1 up to 6 versus 9. There's death. It just gives me, like, you know, uh, giant piles of bits and pieces. Uh, I'm on 19. You know what? We're just going to hold that. You're going to take a tiny bit of damage, but don't worry about it. So uh, there's library. I'm going to take the Dark Flower back. I think you stole that from me. So, okay. We're up to 10 versus 6. There's 21. Stand right there. 26. And there you go. That's how it gets done. So, we could have the King of Gold. The next card you play this round becomes a random Diamonds card for this encounter. Yeah, Diamonds give you more score. Alternatively, the Communist Party card. So, when this gets played... The round is instantly tied. Uh, when it's discarded, uh, it discards to your opponent. So, uh, right, you're literally constantly passing the cards back and forth while also tying the game. So, uh, well, that's just silly, isn't it? You know what? No, I'm going to skip those. I don't really like the look of any of those, to be honest. So, you know, don't just, you know, uh, add too much to your deck. Instead, on this occasion, all right, let's go to the sofa sleeper. Someone's currently asleep. You could grab something from their wallet without waking them up. Right now, there's a 10% chance they'll wake up. So, uh, okay. I could give them a card, uh, but it will increase their chance of waking. Leave them alone to end this encounter. Grab some chips. Okay. 
30 chips. Not a bad amount, to be honest. Or grab a card. I don't really want to add random cards. Some random cards could be bad. I'm going to grab a chips. There we go. I'm going to try one more time. Gosh darn it, she woke up and punched me in the face. Dear oh flippin' dear. So, okay. Memory test or coin flip? I'll take a memory test, a sure game. So, okay, time for a memory test. Pick two cards. Uh, if they match, you keep a copy of that card. So, uh, King of Kings, uh, which was a weird card. Uh, and seven. Then a five. Uh, and a negative nine. I'll take the negative nine. And then that's the King of Kings. Burn the Kings. Do I even want that? You know what? Sure, it was here, wasn't it? Yeah, we'll have that. Why not? So, okay. Speaking of which, we now have to take on that precise gambler in order to, you know, uh, prove we understand our new cards. Marvellous. So, uh, okay. Nine, he immediately bust himself with a lucky stars uh, that went up to 18. Well done, you magnificent bastard. So, uh, okay. Stand there. That's a good amount of damage. And yeah, when we kill you, we're going to get a good, good amount of money. This is going very well. So there's the grave. We've seen you before. And yeah, large cards are worth nothing. There's death up to 18. You are not doing very well, my friend. You're being very unlucky. I'm so sorry about this. This is not going well for you. So 10. There's the magician, which is adding magic tricks to his hand. So uh, right, he's going to start doing a wacky stuff going forwards. Okay, 11, 17, 12. I'm going to stand on 17, that's fine. Okay, he does a tiny bit of damage, that's fine. I'm not worried about that. So 10 versus 10. Now I've got the 7 in a hand, but that's also functionally a 17 if I want it to be. My deck is getting crowded, to be honest. And, oh, right, yes, the duplicates. Thanks to death and whatnot. Gotcha. I will just accept, yes, a tiny, tiny knock rather than risk, you know, busting. So, okay. I can exploit you to add uh, three halves of a chosen suit. I'm going to do that. So, yeah, I choose the suit, which is uh, fine. It will go for, like, you know, diamonds. So, if I do get a 21, yeah, that will be worth a chip. So, right, this is worth uh, somewhere between 0 and 3. So, if I get 18... Then I've got a 21, in fact. So, right, that's good. And that's particularly good because you've just bust. Though, if I play you, that's a 20. No, it's not actually. It's a cocky 21, meaning uh, there we go. A chips, a shield, health. You, sir, did a lot of busting there. And okay, we've got cocky Charizard is here. Sorry, Shard Lizard. Worth a 10. Choose to keep in play or sell to my foe's discard pile for 10 chips. Not that interesting, to be honest. And then there's Kanban. You've not really done that much for me, to be honest. Then again, when you have shown up, you've been good. Then there's the card sleeve. Lock any played card, then burn this card. I'm going to take the Kanban. The Kanban was good. So, okay. Keep on keeping on. So I can shop for cards, or I can go to the Lost and Found. I don't know what those really do, but like, I've got money, so I'll go to the shop. Okay, the hall pass gives me uh, foresight. View a certain number of cards uh, from the draw pile uh, in draw order. It's pretty good. Uh, the trump card again is, yeah, used once, then it's just gone. King of the world. Burn all of the face cards. Fascinating. So right, it's a two that can be a three. And also on taking damage, a deal quick damage equal to the value of this card. So, okay, if I take damage, my opponent also takes damage, right? Oh, I don't even understand how that one works. So I'm going to take the hall pass. That seems useful. Right, on to the paparazzi. So what are we going to do here? Well, she's standing on 17. And we've got the queen of chess right in play, which is magnificent. Six up to, uh, right, 16, which can be 17. And i tell you what, we're just going to bust... Oh, John, for the last time, check if they've got an ace before you send the queen over. Okay, so now we can have the Valentine's Day card. That's delightful. So, right, that can heal, alternatively, business card. We'll take the business card so I can steal your cards. Uh, so there's the King of Kings. Uh, 
Which gets me, yes, up to 16. But if I steal this... John, why did you just bust yourself? Rather than... Okay, John, head in the game. That was all catastrophically not good. Right, let's try this again. So now I can see... Yes, the next card. So a four, a two, and then death is coming in. So, yeah, there's the four. There's the two. You've bust yourself, and now I know I don't want to do anything, because I know death is next. So, okay, but hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. If I stand now, well, we do a ton of damage to you, which is uh, fine. Yeah, then death comes in. So, yeah, that adds a giant pile of bits and pieces. But now stuff gets a bit uh, tricky. I've got a seven in a hand right now. An ace in a hand would be brilliant, actually. So, yeah. I'm going to put the seven in. And I'm going to stand there. Just two damage, but that's fine. We didn't actively lose. That's a okay. So, uh, start building up again. At eight to 15. A 15 is dangerous for you. And there we go. Where you just bust. Because Valentine's is worth a uh, 14. So, uh, ah. On the other hand, you did just heal, so, you know, uh, this isn't going to hurt you uh, that much. So that's seven. Okay, up to 15. And I can't exploit. I'll stand there. We'll do 15 damage to you. So, uh, okay. We just got rid of, the, yeah, the Valentine's card, so you can't do that again. I'm starting at minus nine. We're building up the loyalty card uh, at one. You've just uh, bust yourself again, dear oh flippin' dear. Meaning now I can just take my time, uh, building up two, uh, 19 uh, will be fine, actually. Uh, so, okay. Stand right there and watch for 10, because I've literally got an ace in my hands. Oh, here we go. Right. So now, I can just play both of these cards. Uh, that's now a 21. Stand right there. Get my health back. Screw you. One damage. Okay, life is good. Life is uh, very, very good indeed. I'm just going to hold at 17. That's fine. And there we go. She busts herself. Lovely. You can have the VIP pass. My shift is over, so... Okay. I suspect we're straight on to boss of area two. And on top of that, another Kanban card. Or alternatively, on player, foresight one, deal three damage if the revealed card has a value at less than six. Though this card is worth 11, which is, like, you know, inherently pretty good. But I'm going to take Kanban. Like, you know, just being able to pick cards and then just to shove them into my hand and thus play them at will, that's good. But okay, here comes the bouncer. I've taken on the bouncer before. The bouncer is, um, he's tricky. You see, the bouncer plays by a very, very interesting set of rules. Like, say, for example, uh, yeah, he's just got a 21 in hand right now. And because it's a spade, it basically guarantees him a giant cocking pile of shields. And the rest of his deck is just two tens. Meaning, yeah, he's basically going to play 21-20, 21-20, 21-20. So I've got to find a way to, you know, take those cards off him to slow him down a bit. And there are ways I can do that. Like, you know, the Queen, the library card actually, will be... Very good, in fact. So, okay. We've just got to weather the storm until I can do uh, something to, like, you know, uh, shut him down. So, we're at two and or three. Speaking of a witch, yes, we've got this. So, take the queen. That's fine. Keep hitting a four now. Just put more of these in my hand, which is a-okay. Just keep hitting. So, that's now a 12, which is... Oh, that's not good. That's... I don't want to take that much damage. There's the cocky dark flower. And that's okay. We got library straight away. So what I'm going to do now is, yes, steal one of his cocky cards. Which one do I want to have? And that's the ten of nothing. So we'll take the one of clubs. So okay. You've now only got, yeah, one ten. Which is going to cause you a lot more trouble next round. So okay, just keep on... Seriously, eventually I'm going to find a card that's got a value into oh dear. Not that value, that was a bad value. Okay, that's fine, he's going to do tons of damage to me. But now, now he's in cocky trouble. Because now, oh hang on. Is he guaranteed to bust himself this round? Because he can't stand at 10. He's got to, you know, keep going. Meaning, 
Oh, hang on. Have I just beaten him purely by virtue of the fact that... Wait, 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 wait. Take another hit. He's got to bust himself right now. So as a result, he's now going to shuffle his deck and... Uh, okay. If the 21 comes out, he basically wins. If the 10 comes out, he basically loses. So... Uh, Oh, this is all deeply weird. But bare minimum, I get to heal and get rid of his shields. But yeah, now it kind of just depends uh, what he draws. He either wins uh, or he busts. Like, those are the only two options for him. And on this occasion, he cocking loses. So, okay, I think we've cocking got him. The library card has saved me. So, okay. Stand there. 17 damage. Uh, yeah, if he draws a 21, which he did on this occasion, that's, that's absolutely fine. Bare minimum, I get to time. So as a result, neither of us uh, get yeah, the benefit of uh, winning from uh, the blackjack. So just keep cracking on. And on this occasion, he's going to lose. So I'm just going to stand. Because I know I'm going to get the 13. He's down to 22. Good, uh, good, good, good. I now can see, yes, we've got another hall pass. Then a 5 and a 7. That's great. You're going to lose again, you stupid loser. There's another hall pass. So right, 5, uh, then 7, uh, then minus nine. So, okay. Five. Seven. Minus nine to three. Loyalty. Back up to seven. Thirteen that can be a fourteen. So, play that. Stand. I get the health and the shield. And, oh, we've almost cocky got you. Though, unfortunately, on this occasion, yes. You've managed to cocky get your foil back up. That's no good at all. Then again, if I could hang on, if I could draw, John, there's no queen to draw. So that's if I could get the queen out, we'd be golden. And the alternative is, I could just yeah, exploit my way up to 21 to block him from shielding. Let's see if I happen to get... Ooh, that's not worked out, has it? Okay, what have I got left? I've got no six and no halves. Screw it. I'm going to do it. Right. Just spend all of my advantage to, yeah, force that to be a 21. Now we stand. Right. We're tied, meaning you don't get your shield. Uh, please draw the 10. We've got him. We've cocky got him. Out of the cocking way. And okay, he's giving me nothing but a foil card. So they start in the hand uh, and I can play them uh, from the hand uh, for free. So right, that's why they're good. So a 13, alternatively, uh, a discard. So, quick discard any played card. So, uh, right, discard without actually activating discard effects. Or alternatively, uh, the foil leaving card. So, quick discard all cards currently in your hand. Uh, then drop to the same number of cards uh, in your hand. So, uh, right, that could go well or very badly. I'm just going to take the six, all right? Nice, safe choice to have in hand. Okay, sometime later, my deck has been mostly kicking ass and taking names. Like, seriously, that Queen of Chess is uh, ridiculously useful. But, um, uh, right, things have started to get weird. Like, I was thinking we were just going to uh, get to the casino and get some answers. But instead, uh, we're ascending a staircase into uh, a strange angelic ruin. And I'm uh, feeling the weird sensation of hope as I enter... The land of hope. So, uh, what the cock is going on right now? Right, well, there's... There's a guardian angel. Okay, well, this is... This is all very fascinating. And also, you've got a lot of cocky 21s in your hands. Gotcha. So, uh, okay. Once you get uh, deeper into the game, there's a lot more weird stuff in the decks. So, you've drawn a 21, meaning you've immediately got a 21. But if I could just get my cocking, yes, Queen of Chess in play, I could, like, you know, force you to bust. Anything that gets a card over to you would be good, though, for the time being. Okay, we just have to accept a little bit of uh, punishment for now. That is... Wait, is that a cocking Slay the Spire card? Good, 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 good. Uh, so now my max score just became 20. Hers is 22. Which is worrying, because that means, yes, I literally can't go for 20. So if she gets 21 or 22, uh, she wins by default. I can't tie anymore. So, uh, 
Oh, well, this is all just a fascinating, isn't it? And... Well, bare minimum, you did just bust yourself, so that's good. I could do uh, some damage, but not much. Just stand there, we've done uh, something to you. Uh, that's good, uh, but I'm stuck on uh, 20. Okay, give me the cocking uh, Queen of Chess. You've got now uh, 11. Alright, that's a 6. Down to 10, because that's a minus 1 or minus 11. Minus 3. But I can force you to bust. Oh, I flipping can. So, John, the ace just became minus 11, didn't it? Okay, stand there. She's just going to damage me a bit. That's, that's fine. So, the queen's now on her side. I could halve its value, which I've got to do with the queen of hearts. So, she's now on 16. Never mind 15. So, she might be about to bust herself. Well, I'm about to... Oh, I bust myself. Unless I wait, can I do anything to... To stop that? No, no, I can't. Okay, stand there. 14, 15, 16. Okay, she managed to bust herself anyway. She never hit 18. Fascinating. This is all... John, where did the queen just... Okay, I think the queen's gone now. So now choose a card to move to... Uh my draw pile. I'll take an ace. Sure. This is everything's weird. Now draw additional cards. Uh, okay, take the hall pass so I know what's going on here. She's at 20 and she's going to stand there. That's fine. I can't steal from you. That's 11, but there's so many 10s that... Oh, cock me. Right. Uh, play this. Stand, it's a tiny bit of damage, but everything, it's all fine. There's 10, 2 minus 1. 20 is good, because 20 is yes. That's like currently my flipping blackjack, because you made that my blackjack. So she wins anyway, because 21 beats 20, because oh cock me. Okay, but hang on. The queen appears to be back. I've got 20. She's just, oh, that's good. This is, this is good. She's just bust herself, so I get a bit of health back. <laughs> That's great. Everything is uh, fine and weird. Uh, then we've got, yes, the jumping jack, where, yes, I can either exploit or hit in order to uh, force it to move. So that now goes to uh, you, then gets sent straight back over. Continue sending that over. Give me, yes, more aces. Uh, now hit for a seven. You're going to stand at 19. But if I exploit you, you come back to me, so I get to win and do some damage. Right, yes, everything's... Uh, everything's fine, I, I think, anyway. Oh, and she's also building shield at the same time, so... Uh, oh, I feel like I might be in trouble. Yep, she's just wearing me down bit by bit here, bit by flipping bit. Also... I just played a 7 onto a 14 because I forgot that, yes, my current score limit is 20 and she's got a giant pile of, uh, yes, blackjack clubs that do uh, extra damage anyway, so. Uh... Right, I think this might be, um, the end right, right there. So, uh, okay, I successfully didn't make it past the Cardian Angel uh, into the Kingdom of Hope. Which is a thing that apparently I was trying to do this entire time. So there we go. That there is Dungeons and Degenerate Gamblers and... Uh, okay, it is uh, a very weird, very silly game. Which I should have expected because uh, Balatro is a very weird, very silly game. Though, uh, okay. I will say, I think the game balance in Balatro uh, is better. Like, some cards of this game are just maybe a bit too powerful. But there is a really interesting foundation here. And basically, if you like your card games, uh, you like your roguelikes, and you like the sort of game where you can build uh, ridiculous, ludicrous things uh, that end up doing uh, 10 million damage if you just line it up right, then this may well be of interest to you. I might play, you know, a bit more of this in my own time, and maybe, just maybe, we'll see it again live in future. We shall flipping see. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Dungeons and Degenerate Gamblers. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Wait, how does this, how does this thing work? That's... I'll put it on backwards! I don't know how to take it off now!
You have bullets, what do you want? Aha! Okay, I figured it out. Round peg goes in round hole. I don't even smoke, but I kind of feel like now would be an appropriate point for a post-coital cigarette. <laughs>